Hello, everyone. Today we'll be talking about the Bunim effect. So Bunim effect is nothing but it is defined as the effect of the left ventricle contraction or the shifting of the interventricular septum onto the right ventricle. So right ventricular failure, which is occurring due to the mechanical obstruction caused by bulging of the interventricular septum into the right ventricle is called as the Bunim effect. So as we go through, so what happens here is when there is severe LV hypertrophy or severe LV, there is increase in LV pressure. So whenever this LV pressure is high, due to this LV increase LV pressure, what happens is that this interventricular septum goes and shifts towards the right ventricle and it almost obstructs the right ventricle. So this ventricle septum, whenever it bulges towards the right ventricle due to increased pressure in LV, it bulges in the right ventricle and decreases the increases the right ventricular pressure. So this is what is called as Bunim effect. What is reverse Bunim effect? Is reverse Bunim effect is nothing but is the reverse of the Bunim effect. The reverse Bunim effect is that whenever uh, there is increased pressure in the right ventricle, suppose there are increased ventricular right ventricular pressure. So this pressure will go and transmit into the interventricular septum and this interventricular septum will shift to the left ventricle and that's there will be a narrowing of the left ventricle and or there is a pressure effect on the left ventricle. So this is called as reverse Bernheim effect. So Bernheim effect is commonly seen in wherever the case there is a increased hypertrophy of the left ventricle as seen in aortic stenosis or severe uh, concentric hypertrophy or hydrotrophy as seen in HOCM. So when there is increased pressure in the left ventricle, this causes what is called as the Bernheim effect, hypertrophy of the ventricle septum as in aortic stenosis. Also, it is seen in septal aneurysm. Suppose there is infarction of the infarction of the septum due to my myocardial infarction. If there is infarction of the septum and there is aneurysm of the septum, so a little increase in pressure will lead to bulge of the septum uh, into the right ventricle and can cause the right ventricular obstruction or right ventricular compressive symptoms. So the patient may present with right ventricular failure. Due to this increased pressure in the right ventricle, now what happens in JVP is that so whenever atria is contracting, atria has to contract against some resistance in the right ventricle due to this compressive effect. So this will that's why it leads to prominent A wave. So as you all know, the A wave is actually generated because of atrial contraction. So now whenever the atria is contracting, the ventricle pressure is very high. In the right ventricle, the pressure is very high. So right atrium has to contract against that pressure. So that's why there is a prominent so more backflow into the JVP and more prominent will be the A wave. So that's why in aortic stenosis, even though there is no right ventricular failure as such, there can be a presence of a prominent A wave. Reverse burning effort, as I said, is the reverse of that. That is the increase in pressure of the right ventricle can cause compressive effect over the left ventricle. So this is uh, can be seen in uh, physiologically during inspiration. So what, in, what happens during inspiration is that during inspiration, uh, there's increased filling of the right ventricle. And this right ventricle will now compress the interventricular septum and cause that. So that is what is called as uh, a reverse burning effect. It is also seen in pulmonary embolism as well as constrictive pericarditis. In pulmonary embolism, because of the right ventricular outflow tract obstruction, the right ventricular pressure increases. And this right ventricle now compresses this left ventricle, leading to obstructive symptoms of the left ventricle, leading to uh, increased backflow, that is uh, left atrial pressures, and increase what is called as pulmonary venous pressures and leading to pulmonary edema. Hope you have understood this topic. Uh, if you have any queries, uh, do test in my comment box. Uh, if you have liked my video, do subscribe my channel, Dr. Akibek, for more interesting videos. Thank you.